Assalamualaikum and very good day to all of you. So today we will proceed with our lessons for today in physical geology about uh, mass wasting. Uh, so what is mass wasting is all about? So uh, mass wasting is the general term uh, for downslope movement of rocks or unconsolidated materials under the force of gravity. So it can be a slow, gradual process or it can be sudden catastrophic. So landslide are uh, a type of mass wasting, but they are typically more rapid and destructive. So it more or less like landslide. So the term mass wasting is uh, synonymous with a uh, slope failure. Uh, if you heard this before, because we have plenty events of slope failure happen in, in, in Malaysia. So that is the only natural disaster that we can say catastrophic in, in, in Malaysia. Because slope failure uh, is it, it, described as uh, the failure of a slope uh, and the subsequent downslope movement of materials. So the term landslide is almost synonymous um, with uh, mass wasting, but there is a slight different uh, in, in usage. Some people use the term landslide to refer to any type of mass wasting while others use it to refer specifically to a rapid slope failure. So that is what makes uh, the landslide and uh, mass wasting uh, different. But uh, in general, landslide and mass wasting is more or less uh, the same. So we are going to take a look on the factors that uh, affecting or control the uh, slope stability. So in general, again, mass wasting is a downslope movement of rocks or unconsolidated materials like sand, clay or seals uh, under the force of gravity. So it is caused by a number of factors. Okay? One is tectonic processes. That is uh, the most common one, and then it's because of the erosions. Uh, another one is the angle of slope, uh, apa ni, weathering, ataupun weather. Weather also plays a, a role in uh, factor that affecting the slope stability. So tectonic processes uh, such as plate tectonic can cause uplift of the uh, earth surface. So this uplift creates slope. Uh, that we uh, learn during the structure geology, if you recall, which are inclined plates for the slope that have been lifted by the tectonic uh, that are subjected to the force of gravity if there is any movement uh, going down. The steeper the slope, the greater the force of gravity acting on it. So, and the more like it is the mass wasting will occur. So, erosion is the process. Uh, by, by which uh, earth surface is worn away by wind, uh, water, ice and uh, other agents. Okay, erosions or weathering uh, ero uh, er eroded lah, eh, can create slopes by removing materials from the top of the hill or mountain by depositioning ataupun depositing. Okay, it dump uh, the material at the base of the slope from the top and dump it to the base of the slope. So the resulting slope can be unstable and prone to um, mass wasting. So the strength of material on a slope uh, will uh, affect its stability. So uh, weak materials such as unconsolidated sediment or fractured rocks are more likely to fail than uh, strong materials uh, such as solid rock. So the presence of water can also weakening, weakening uh, materials and make them more uh, susceptible uh, to mass uh, wasting. So the image uh, shows uh, here is a diagram of a slope with a, a shear force and also a normal force. So the shear force is the force that cause, uh, causes the object to move down uh, from the slope uh, while the normal force is the force that causes the object to move up to the slope. So they are uh, again each other. Normal slope is going upward while the shear wave is going uh, downward. So uh, the, the shear strength is the maximum shear force that the slope can withstand with, uh, before it fails. Uh, so while, while the, for the gravitational force uh, over here, so this is the force of gravity uh, acting on the object and it is represented by uh, the black arrow over here which is always uh, perpendicular to the, uh, to, to, to the surface, flat surface. So the slope is uh, stable if the shear force uh, is less than the shear strength. 
okay uh, shear force is less than shear strength and if the shear force is greater than uh, shear strength the slope will fail and the object will move down uh, the slope so the factor that affect the stability of slope includes the angle of the slope number one yeah? if you look over here we have a different angle of slopes that play its roles in whether to make uh, the overburdens to be uh, uh, landslide at the point a drop or at the point uh, sliding or landslide or, or not so uh, the strength of the material on the slope is also uh, another factor and also uh, the, the, the presence of water, ice and, and, and many more that might lubricate uh, the surface that will enhance at the point will increase the movement uh, of uh, the top uh, body so the steeper the slope we know uh, the more likely it uh, to fail so weak materials are more likely to fail than strong material and uh, the presence of water can weaken materials and make them uh, susceptible to uh, failure so by understanding the forces acting on the slope we can better understand how to make uh, the slope more stable so this can help to present landslide or other uh, mass wasting event uh, so the diagram shows uh, of a slope with a different bedding orientation uh, a b c and d so the bedding is the as you know this is the layer of uh, the rocks that make up uh, the slope so the different bedding orientation will actually affect uh, the stability of the slope. For example, uh, at the location A, so the bedding is nearly perpendicular to the slope. So uh, this is the most stable orientation because the layer of rock can resist uh, the force of gravity. So meaning that if the bedding of the layer is perpendicular to, uh, to the slope, uh, this slope uh, therefore it has uh, uh, it will be more stable and that is also for for the b because it's almost uh, perpendicular and and uh, as for c the bedding uh, is nearly horizontal so this is an intermediate uh, stability because the layer of rocks are not stable as when they are perpendicular to the slope like uh, the a and b uh, but they are also not uh, as unstable as when they are parallel to the slope. So this one is uh, almost uh, horizontal, uh, still against uh, the, the, the slope angle, uh, but it is considered moderately uh, stable okay? uh, because uh, it will not be affected much, affected much by the gravity. So let's take a look on the C. Uh, sorry let's take a look on the uh, d so this one is a bit uh, problem because if you can see here the bedding plane uh, or the bedding orientation is almost uh, parallel to d so when it's almost parallel to d uh, the the bedding plane or the interface of the plane is actually uh, will act as a medium where it can slide the top part of this layer and especially when it's been it has meaning that it has a, a great shear strength uh, that will allow uh, this top burden uh, to fall down uh, according to the uh, based on the gravitational force so once you have a parallel uh, bedding towards the slope you're going to have very least stable type of uh, slope So we are still in the uh, factor that uh, affecting or control the slope stability. So the strength of rock uh, is determined by its uh, compositions, uh, structures and also weathering. So the internal uh, variations in uh, the compositions and structures uh, of the rocks can uh, significantly affect uh, their strength. For example, uh, schist is a type of metamorphic rocks. Um, that is made up of layers of different min minerals. So the, the, the layers that are rich in uh, sheet silicate uh, such as mica, chlorides or biotites are weaker than the layers that are made up of other minerals. So this is because uh, sheet silicate are more easily broken down uh, by weatherings and some minerals are also more uh, susceptible to weathering than others. For example, uh, Felsfar, as you know, is quite common mineral that is found in many types of rocks like uh, granite, 
uh, sandstone and many sedimentary rocks lah. Uh, even in the carbonate also uh, feldspar can be found so when 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 feldspar is uh, weathered so it will form uh, a, a clay clay mineral uh, for example like elite momorilonite um ilminite or uh, most commonly is colinite and we, sh we, we should know that uh, clay is a weak mineral that is uh, easily eroded so uh, unconsolidated sediments are generally weaker than uh, sedimentary rocks okay because they are not cemented together so sediment are made up of individual grain of sand or seeds or matrix uh, and clay so these grains are not held together by any strong bonds so the binding properties of sediment is sometimes refers uh, to as uh, cohesion okay cohesion so cohesion is the force that hold the grain of sediment together and the strength of cohesion uh, depends on the size of the shape of the grain and the amount of water in the sediment and the type of uh, mineral that are present so in general sand and seals are particularly uh, weak sediment uh, clay is generally generally a little stronger and sand mixed with clay can be uh, stronger to, uh, stronger still because uh, the combination of these two uh, materials is actually uh, uh, fill up uh, the voids that, uh, in, in between them. So the strength of rock is an important factor in, in, in its stability. A weak rock is more likely to uh, fail than a, a strong rock. So this that this is why it is important to consider the strength of the rocks when uh, assessing the stability of the slope. So unconsolidated sediment, as you know, are made up of uh, individual grain of sand, silts, and also clay. So these grains are not held together by any strong bond. So however, when water is present, it can help to bind the grain together. So this is because water molecules have uh, properties called surface tension. So the surface tension, uh, as you know, is the force that holds the surface of liquid together. Uh, unconsolidated uh, sediments, uh, the water molecules at the grain boundaries uh, form a thin uh, film that hold the grain together. So this uh, film of water is very very strong and it can help to prevent uh, the grain from sliding past each other. So th th this is why unconsolidated, unconsolidated sediments are uh, strongest when they are uh, in the moist state. However, if the sediments are too wet, the water can actually push the grain apart. So this is because the water molecule are attached to each other more than uh, more, more than they are attracted to the grain. So this can reduce the friction between uh, the grains, making the sediments uh, weaker. So this is why saturated sediments tend to the uh, to be the weakest of, of all. So the, the the strength of unconsolidated sediment is also affected by the size of uh, or, or shape of the grain. Okay, smaller grain have a larger surface area, which means that there is more surface tension to hold uh, them together. So this is why fine grain. <coughs> uh, <coughs> so this is why finer grain sediments such as clay seals are generally stronger than uh, coarser grain sediments such as sand. So the the strength of uh, unconsolidated sediment is an important factor in uh, determine their susceptibility. So a weak sediment is more likely uh, to fail uh, than uh, a strong sediment. So this is why it is important to consider a strength uh, of the sediment when assessing the stability of a slope. So water here is the main issue or factor because water can reduce strength of solid rock in a numbers of way. Number one, uh, water can seep into the fracture and bedding planes, uh, which can weaken the strokes, uh, weaken the rocks uh, by uh, making it more brittle. Second, uh, water can dissolve uh, some minerals in the rocks, which can also uh, weakening it. So the third one, water can cause clay minerals in the rocks to swell, uh, which can further weaken, uh, weaken the rocks. Okay. okay, again, number one, water can seep through the uh, fractures and make it uh, more brittle. Uh, second, water can dissolve some minerals in the rock, 
we also can weaken it and lastly the clay minerals in the rocks uh, 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 will swell which can further weakening uh, the rocks so the effect of water uh, on the strength of rocks is even more significant when the water is under pressure okay when the water is under pressure uh, the water can force the fractures and bedding planes uh, to be open which can further weakening uh, the rocks so this is why you will uh, always see holes uh, drilled into rocks on road uh, cut to relieve the water pressure if you uh, go to along the way to the Cameron Highland you can see that on the granite outcrop they're going to put a uh, kind of pipes and, and so on because they want to release the water so that uh, it will not uh, give uh, some pressure or to release the water lah, to uh, to mix the <clears throat> to to release the factor uh, like water pressure so uh, clay minerals <clears throat> Okay, clay minerals uh, are particularly uh, susceptible to the effect of water. So all clay minerals will absorb uh, the water. So that is common character, uh, uh, attributes of the clay minerals is always uh, absorb uh, the water, which can reduce uh, their strength actually. However, uh, smectite, smectite clay uh, can absorb a lot of water, and this can cause uh, the sheet uh, of the mineral to separate. Uh, at a molecular level so the expansion of the clay mineral can make it uh, extremely slippery and it can also reduce its strength uh, to almost nothing and finally water uh, significantly increase the mass of the materials on a slope which uh, increases uh, the gravitational force uh, pushing it down so this is because water uh, is much denser than air so a saturated uh, sediment will weigh more than a dry sediment so the increase in mass due to water can uh, have a significant uh, impact on uh, the stability of a slope for example uh, a body sediment that has 25 percent of porosity and is saturated with water with approximately 13% more than uh, it does when it completely dries. So the gravitational shear force is also 30% uh, higher. So this means that the slope is more likely uh, to fail uh, if it is uh, saturated uh, with water. So uh, the effect of water on stability of slopes are a complex issue actually. And there are many, many other factors that, uh, that, that also can play a, a, a role or a major role. However, the increase in mass uh, due to water is one of the, uh, the most important factors to consider. One, again, because uh, it will act as a lubricant uh, that uh, accelerates uh, the process of uh, landslide, mass wasting and so on. Another one is it will increase uh, the, the, the top burden ataupun the top layer because uh, like clay it will absorb the water and it will increase the weight and when the weight is uh, can uh, no longer to be uh, sustained on the slope it will uh, fall down so uh, increase in water content is the most common uh, mass wasting trigger so water can weaken the materials on a slope and making them more likely to fail so this is because water can seep into cracks and pores in the materials making them more slippery or just like I said become will act as lubricant and water also can increase the mass of the materials on the slope which is increasing the gravitational force to push it down and then uh, rapid uh, melting of snows uh, and ice so when, when snow or ice melts, uh, it can add a large amount of water to a slope very quickly. So this can cause the slope uh, to become unstable and fail. So And heavy rain uh, can also add a large amount of water uh, to a slope very quickly, meaning that the effect of the weather. Okay, And this can cause uh, the slope to become unstable and fail. So the change in the weather also play a major role. Sometimes we have a uh, very hot temperature day and then sometimes we have a uh, heavy rain 
then uh, the what the, the the surface of the slope somehow will eroded and weathered because the change of the seasons uh, change of uh, the weather especially in Malaysia so that's why you can see that the surface of the slope most of the slope in Malaysia most of the rocks in Malaysia are uh, weathered uh, <coughs> changes in uh, water uh, flow pattern so changes in water flow pattern can also uh, cause slopes to fail okay for example uh, if an earthquake uh, dams uh, up uh, a stream the water behind the dam uh, can build a, uh, up a pressure and eventually cause the dam to fail so this can cause uh, this can release uh, a large amount of water into slope causing it to fail and then freezing and thawing so freezing and thawing can also cause slope to fail so when water freeze uh, it will expand okay if you remember uh, back in the uh, granite or sedimentary class if i'm not mistaken so this this can cause a crack to form in the materials on the uh, on, on a slope so when water thaws so the crack can uh, widening uh, can can widen and making the slope uh, more unstable and then um, lastly uh, shaking earthquake and so on so shaking uh, earthquake uh, can also cause uh, slope to fail so when the ground shakes uh, so it can weakening the materials on the slope so this is because shaking can cause cracks to form in the materials and shaking can also uh, cause loose materials on slope to uh, slide down uh, the slope <coughs> So the table here shows the different type of mass wasting, uh, their characteristics and the typical rates of uh, movement. Uh, we go with the uh, apa ni, fa sorry, uh, failure type. So this is the type of mass wasting that uh, commonly occur and uh, the different type of mass wasting include uh, rock fall, rock slide, uh, slum, mud flow and debris flow. So we have many more. We're going to look into uh, the details one by one later. And then we uh, look at the type of materials. So this is the type of material that uh, is involved in the mass uh, wasting event. So the different type of materials including uh, rock, soils and unconsolidated sediment will uh, determine uh, what type of uh, failure is. So uh, and then we move into type of motion. So this is the way uh, of the materials to move during the mass wasting event. So uh, the different uh, type of motion include uh, vertical uh, fall, uh, sliding, uh, or, or flowing. So the rate motion. The rate motion. Uh, this is the speed at which uh, material move during the mass wasting event. So the rate of motion can be uh, very widely from very slow to uh, very fast. Uh, rockfall. So rockfall is a type of mass wasting that occurs when a large rock fall from a cliff. So this is quite common. So if there is any rocks uh, that fall from cliff, uh, uh, from the fracture, we call it as rockfall. And rockfall can be caused by a variety of factors, including most of the time weathering, and of course erosion uh, earthquake also can be a factor uh, fracture and and many more so rock falls can be very very dangerous as they can uh, strike people's and properties with great force i still remember i'm doing the csr uh, community service response uh, with a district office uh, to help uh, people that been buried because of the rock fall in uh, kramat pulai if i'm not mistaken last year Last year we have a big issue because of the uh, rock fall and we use a geophysical method uh, to identify the body. And then a rock slide. So rock slide is the type of mass wasting that occur when a large mass uh, of rock slides down uh, a slope. Uh, just now rock fall uh, vertically uh, collapse uh, of the rocks. This one rock is sliding on the slopes so rock slope can cause by a variety of factor including uh, weathering erosion earthquake and also fracture uh, and might be because of the fall uh, rock slide can be very destructive as they can carry away large amount of material 
and uh, damage the infra infrastructure. And then we have um, slum. So slum is the type of mass wasting that occur when a mass of soil uh, or rock slides down a slope along a curved surface. So uh, slum can be caused by a variety of factor, uh, similar like uh, just now, but uh, and it's very destructive and uh, it will have a certain degree of uh, damage. Uh, mud flow. Uh, so mud flow uh, is the type of mass wasting that occur when uh, a mixture of soils, rock, and water flows uh, down uh, on a slope. So uh, mud flow. Uh, mud flow can be caused by a variety of factors, uh, most of the time because of heavy rain, volcanic eruptions, dam failure, uh, and many more. So many, uh, mud flow can be uh, very uh, destructive as they can carry a certain amount of materials that uh, damage the infrastructure. Uh, lastly, we have uh, uh, debris flow. Uh, so debris flow is quite uh, common in Malaysia like uh, last two years or last year if I'm not saying in 2022 uh, December or maybe 2021 if I'm not mistaken that happened in Kedah, Merbuk uh, that is the one of the place that we commonly visit uh, every time we do the Jofil camp uh, in, in Jerai uh, so uh, they classified the uh, mass wasting as debris flow because that occur when a mixture of soils, rocks, and water flow uh, flows down uh, a slope uh, very rapidly. So debris, debris flow can be caused by a variety of factors and most of the time in Malaysia especially because of the heavy rain. Um, so these are an example or examples of uh, the motions uh, of the mass wasting. We have flow, we have fall, and we also have slide. So flow is uh, when the uh, mass wasting or the uh, original uh, place is over here and flow because of uh, most of the time presence of water during heavy rain and, and so on. Uh, fall. So fall as we know that it is because of uh, fracture, weathering and so on uh, that most of the time is fracture that uh, fall down uh, the uh, excessive mass uh, over the uh, slope. So the, this is where the original positions are on the cliff and because of the fracture this block of rocks is uh, falling down and create wave when it hits the uh, oceans. And then we also have slide. So slide is a bit different compared to the flow. Okay, one is because uh, it's not necessarily because of water, and second is uh, for the flow, it doesn't have uh, the what we call it as plane exists. Okay, it's not a, a consistent ataupun a clear plane, uh, a slope plane. And uh, for the slide, we can see that uh, the failure plane. For example, this this is the failure plane where uh, the top mass is actually sliding uh, to uh, on the on the plane itself and uh, for the rotational slide uh, slump uh, this one is uh, the, the plane is also visible because uh, even though it's not a, a straight uh, slope it will show you the curved slope and most of the time slum or rotational slide it will have uh, different stages okay like as shown in this picture so this is uh, in term of the speed uh, ataupun the motion uh, speed of movement from fast uh, to slow for example rock fall uh, is very fast okay because it, uh, it it will fall down as a gravitational force and rock avalanche uh, rock uh, slide uh, is uh, a bit slow where we can see the movement and we still have some time to make reaction uh, a minimal time lah minimal time and then we have a debris debris flow uh, sorry de debris falls so this is quite quite fast uh, quite fast and most of the time uh, the fast speed of movement of the mass wasting depends on the uh, on the slope so for example rock fall and debris fall is since the the slope is vertical so it will uh, increase at the point where it, it actually has a 
fast speed movement and debris avalanche uh, debris slides so that one is uh, a bit slow mud flow is a uh, uh, very uh, high intensity in terms of speed of movement because of the um, uh, the, the mixture of soils and uh, most of, mostly mud with, with water so it kind of uh, the, the, the movement of, or the speed of movement is almost similar to the uh, flow of a river and then we have earth flow slum slum is a bit slow because it's uh, stages by stages and we have debris flow uh, as far uh, very fast uh, soil function and earth creep so we're going to take a look uh, uh, at least some of these apa nama uh, landslide or mass wasting uh, from uh, one by one so let's take a look on the rock fall um, uh, frost waging uh, is a common process that can cause rock fragments to break off from the steep bedrock slope for example like here uh, frost waging if you remember uh, we learned it in the sedimentary rock if I'm not mistaken occur when the water seep into the crack over here and, pour, uh, and pours in the rocks so when the water freeze so it will expand it will expand the fracture and this expansion can cause the cracks uh, to uh, widen and the rock to break apart so when it break apart it will fall, uh, fall down frost waging is most common in area uh, where there are many uh, freeze thaw cycle per year so this is because the water uh, in the crack has more opportunity to freeze and to expand uh, frost waging uh, can be significant uh, factor in slope stability if uh, too many rock fragments break off uh, from a slope it can become unstable and collapse so this is why it is uh, an important uh, so or this is very crucial to be aware of frost wedging in area uh, where it is common uh, occurrence and then we move into a uh, rock slide so rock slide are a type of landslide which uh, is in general term for the movement of mass of rock combined of soil or debris down from a slope. So uh, rock slide are caused by variety factor, one uh, earthquake and most of the time heavy rainfall, uh, rapid snow melt for other countries, not Malaysia, uh, groundwater uh, erosion uh, and most uh, penny, uh, to be blamed is because of human activities such as deforestation and also for construction uh, rock slide can be very destructive uh, and they can uh, cause uh, serious injuries or death so there are several things that can be done to mitigate uh, the risk of rock slide uh, such as stabilizing slope with a retaining wall or other structure okay as you can see especially in the uh, the slopes uh, before Trowong uh, Menora uh, from, from the north um, <coughs> the, the word uh, I'm not really sure how to spell it uh, maybe I can uh, spell it as uh, Sekang uh, it's a German word that, mean, uh, that means uh, subsidence or uh, sinking so it is used to describe the very slow motion of a block rock of slope uh, second is uh, caused by the same uh, factor uh, that cause uh, rock slide but it's very much a gradual process second can be uh, eventually leads to uh, rock slides but it is not an uh, immediate trait so rock avalanches are a type of uh, landslide that is characterized by the rapid movement of a large mass of fragmented rocks so rock uh, avalan uh, avalanches can travel at speed uh, more than 100 km per hour and they can uh, reach a distance at several kilometers so dah laju uh, very fast and then it covers very wide uh, area uh, rock avalanches are caused by the same factor that cause a rock slide but they are typically triggered by more uh, energetic event Okay, such as uh, earthquake, uh, triggered earthquake, uh, volcanic eruptions, and, and, and many more that related to the uh, high intensity of uh, event.
ataupun failure event. So rock avalanches can be very destructive and then can offer serious injury uh, to death. And the part uh, about the cushion of air is particularly uh, interesting that we mentioned here. So as you know, the air cushion helps to reduce uh, friction between uh, moving mass of rock on the ground, uh, which allow the rocks uh, avalanche the, to travel from uh, faster, at the point travel much faster than tra uh, traditional. Uh, less light. So this is a kind of uh, mitigation way. Uh, creep or uh, solid fluxion uh, is a very uh, slow process, uh, typically moving at rate of a millimeter to centimeter per year. So very very slow, unlike uh, rock avalanche and rock fall. Uh, so solid uh, solid fluxion is more rapid process, uh, moving a rate of centimeter uh, to meter per year. So if creep uh, is millimeter to centimeter. Uh, for solid fluxion is more uh, higher in terms of uh, rapid processing uh, that will take a centimeter to meter per uh, per year. Uh, creep is caused by variety factor including number one gravity, number two expansion and co contraction of soil due to uh, changes in moisture content, uh, and then uh, plant growth and animal uh, burrowing. So, solid fluxion is caused by freeze thaw uh, cycle when the uh, water freezes is expand, which can cause soil particles to move apart. So, when the wa water uh, thaws, uh, the soil particle collapse back together. Okay, but they are not uh, uh, returned to their original position. So, this process can cause the soil to slowly more uh, downslope. Uh, solid fluxion is most uh, common in cool environment where the uh, ground freeze uh, to, uh, and thaw seasoning. So it can be occur in area with uh, permafrost, which is uh, permanently uh, frozen ground. So now we move into uh, slums. So slums are a type of um, landslide uh, that is characterized by the down uh, down slope uh, movement of a mass. Uh, of soil or other unconsolidated materials. So the materials involved in a slum is typically uh, thicker than uh, 100 meter, and it may along one or more curved failure success, uh, ataupun failure surfaces. Um, uh, slums are typically caused by an uh, excess of water within the materials, which make it uh, more likely to slide. So the key features of a slums are shown in this picture are uh, a curve failure surface which is the surface along with the material uh, that has been moved uh, downward motions near to the top uh, of the slum and upward uh, motion uh, towards the bottom so a head scarp which is the a stick face uh, at the top of the slum and a toe uh, is uh, uh, which is the end of the slum when it comes uh, to, re to rest so again Head scarf is on top while toe is on the bottom. So now let's take a look on the uh, mud flow, uh, uh, mud flow or debris flow. So mud flow are a type of uh, landslide that is characterized by the rap, uh, rapid movement of a mass of water and fine grain sediments such as sand and silt. Um, mud flow can occur in a variety of var environment, but they are most common areas in steep slope and uh, loose sediment. Uh, debris flow are a type of sense, uh, landslide that is characterized uh, by the rapid movement of mass wasting, uh, sorry, mass of water, uh, fine grain uh, sediment, and large particles such as gravel or boulders. So debris flow can be uh, much more destructive than uh, mud flow as they can carry large object and bury entire structure. Uh, debris flow typically form in area with a steep uh, slope and a lot of uh, loose sediment. Uh, the main uh, difference between uh, mud flow and debris flow uh, is the size of the particle that they contain. Mud flow are primarily uh, composed of fine grain sediment while um, debris flow contain a mixed fine uh, 
uh, grain sediments and larger particle so this uh, difference in particle uh, size is what give the debris flow their greater destructive uh, power uh, mud flow and debris flow uh, can be very dangerous and they can cause significant uh, damage to uh, properties and also infrastructure uh, they can also be deadly as they can bury people uh, or, or, or inside vehicle. If you like it in an area that is prone to mud flow or debris flow, it is important to be aware of the risk and uh, to take precautions to protect yourself and your properties. Now we look into the mitigations ataupun uh, preventing, delaying, monitoring and mitigate, mitigation uh, mass wasting. So, uh, for uh, prevention, uh, strength uh, the material on slope, this can be done by adding uh, mechanical devices such as uh, rock bolts which help to anchor the soil in, in, in place. So, it can also be done by ensuring the water uh, can drain away as water can weaken the soil and make it more likely to slide. So, uh, uh, Avoid practices that uh, makes matters worse, uh, including cutting into a uh, steep slope or impeding proper drain uh, drainage. So this uh, practice can increase the risk of uh, mass wasting and so on. And then we also have uh, the mitigation. Uh, we will construct uh, shelters uh, or divisionary channel. Shelters can be built to, be, uh, to protect people and property from mass wasting. Uh, diversionary channels can be built uh, to uh, direct the flow uh, of water and debris away from the populated area. Avoid buildings in area uh, where slope failure is uh, inevitable. Uh, it is slope known uh, to be uh, unstable and it is best to avoid uh, building anything there. So it is important to note that there is no one size fit all solutions to prevent uh, mitigation mass wasting. So the best uh, approach will be, will be very depending on the specific situations. However, by, the, by fol following the principle outlined above, it is possible to reduce the risk uh, of this hazard. Uh, in the event of uh, preventing and so on, we need to be uh, prepared, very prepared. For example, on these two pictures, two strategi uh, strategies for mitigation debris flow uh, on the sea to sky uh, highway. Uh, on the left is a concrete line channel on Alberta Creek. Uh, Creek allows debris to flow quickly through the ocean. Uh, while the right uh, is the debris flow catchment uh, basins on the Charles Creek in 2010 and a debris flow uh, filled to basin uh, filled to the basin uh, to the travel uh, to the level of the dotted uh, white line over here and uh, we will watch uh, the uh, massive landslide uh, that is being caught uh, on camera i think mr shafi is the one who responsible uh, in taking uh, let, let's see how it is either uh, okay or it's neither okay or not i think that's all for today's uh, lessons lecture on uh, mass wasting uh, please don't uh, use these links to uh, key in uh, your attendance or uh, by scanning this figure this is the one that i used for uh, previous semester but uh, i would advise you to use power apps uh, to ensure that you are actually listening to this uh, lecture. So with that, uh, I, re I really hope you enjoy uh, this uh, lecture, very short one, and you can uh, we can have some uh, benefits by uh, revising these topics in the class in, or in the next class. Again, uh, thank you and until we meet again.